And since it, there's going to be many people asking me for help for this particular challenge, so I decided to make a separate video for this. This is the sixth challenge of the challenge missions, which has a very ridiculous risk that states that all of free, or basically free himself, have 200% HP, 150% attack, 15 rest, so there's no increase in defense, take note of that, that's very important. 300% attack range, so you can pretty much attack everywhere on the map. Can use Weft and Warp, we're gonna read what this skill is again later on. And cooldown is reduced by 60%. So this is basically a ASPD increase. It makes him insane as an attacking uh, enemy, but we do have some ways to get across that problem. Now, along with this particular tag, there is also DP cost of Sniper, Guard and Casters being doubled. Take note of that, it's only double, it's not triple, so it doesn't hurt to deploy some snipers, guard or casters within the stage. But, redeployment time is increased by 50%. So as far as possible, you kind of don't want to be like removing them and then putting, back, uh, putting them back in the stage again. And at the same time, there's also a DP generation down by 50%. So if you look at the boss over here, he has A defense and A resistance. Now his resistance has sorry, now his resistance has increased, so his defense is still intact, meaning to say he's actually weaker against physical damage. Now for Wef and Warp, it deals arts damage to the enemies in the surrounding cross area. So cross area is a plus sign. It's gonna be two tiles up, two tiles down, two tiles to the right, and two tiles to the left. And the way that it works is that it will only attack um the furthest target, as you see over here. So attacks twice, additionally unleash Weft and Warp on the furthest target. In the case of the risk that you got, uh, the risk tree free tag, it causes it to already be triggerable in the first phase. So we need to try to do it in a way where, if you learn from the Neon Light event, there was the Nova Caster, correct? Which had the diamond shape. And we always try to place our operators such that only the operator in the middle of the diamond will get hurt or affected. And, and then afterwards you can retreat the operator. This time around, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to place an operator down to trigger the plus section, but there will be no one around the plus so that nobody gets hurt. You get the idea? So we're going to work with that uh, sort of thinking there. Um, whereas for the other enemies over here, if you see this guy, he's weak to arts damage. This one is weak to physical. This is any type of damage. is D defense and D resistance. And for Baiti also, any type of damage, C defense and C resistance. So we're going to use us damage against this one specifically and then physical against this one. All right. Now the squad they're going to take is a very small squad. Easy for you guys to adapt. So there are eight operators over here. The main six star of the show is going to be a mountain on skill 2 M3. So if you don't have that, please borrow from a friend. And if you don't have a friend with that, come to the Discord server. You can add someone over there. Next up, you're going to want a Myrtle. Myrtle doesn't need to be um, Mastery 3. A skill 1 rank 7 Myrtle will do. And it also doesn't need to be an Elite 2 Myrtle. I believe an Elite 1 Myrtle will be more than enough. Although you do need an Elite 2 Operator in your squad in order to borrow your Mountain. Take note of that. Then afterwards, you'll want two slower supporters. So an example of this is going to be Podenko and Orchid. Now, the thing about Orchid is that Orchid has an increase in ASPD, which is very helpful to tackle against two particular Smarties, the Explody Boys later on. The way that we're going to tackle this stage is not like the Risk 18 strat. In the Risk 18 strat, we cause all the Smarties to like collide with each other, and then they explode. This time, we want to kill all of them without causing any explosions. So with this idea, Orchid is going to be killing some of the Smarties later on. You can replace her with people like Istina on her skill 1. You can replace her with um, Suzuran on her skill 2. Um, Angelina on skill 2 is also okay. Um, you can also replace her with snipers or casters. Basically, as long as they can kill uh, the two Smarties that you see Orchid kill later on, then you can use them to replace. Alright? Podenko, on the other hand, is another slower supporter. You can replace her with other slower supporters as well. So Angelina's skill 3 is a good example. Suzran's skill 2 also very good. Um, you can use Glockers if you want, if you have Glockers built. Uh, I would say use her on the skill 1. Um, you want to try to use your slower supporter as someone who can multi-target. So Istina is also another example of a multi-target slower supporter. Um, if not, right, you can also use maybe say Megalan. Uh, Megalan and her drones is going to help in this stage. Or you can replace her with a caster. So Aethiela, Kyobi, Stewart, um, any caster that you have in mind is actually very good to replace with Podenko. But bear in mind, there is the increased cost in DP. 
So I only have one DP generator in the squad right now, which is Myrtle herself. If you think you need another DP generator, like a second standard bearer, a second pioneer vanguard, go ahead and bring them in the stage. Okay? Then after this, bring two single target medic. Very easy to place. You can replace them with other strong single target medics or even AoE ones, uh, multi-target ones that you have. Uh, one ring medics and therapists, I'm completely fine that you use them as well. As long as your medics are super strong. As, as you can see, I'm bringing three star medics, which goes to say anyone else can replace them. Next up, bring a healing defender, someone who constantly heals themselves. So Gumi is an example. Um, if you have a No, a Saria build, also very good. Um, is there anyone else that I have in mind? You can bring a guard that self-regenerates HP. So Silver Ash is an example as well on his, uh, on his skill 2. Um, anybody else that I have in mind? Yeah, basically as long as they can self-regen, I'm okay. Uh, as to them replacing Gumi. And then bring a Gravel on a skill 2. Uh, make it, don't need to be rank 7 actually. But don't need to be Elite 1, uh, sorry, don't need to be Elite 2 as well for both Gumi and Gravel. Elite 1 Gumi and Elite 1 Gravel will work just fine. If you need more bodies, more vanguards, or you have other strong 6 stars in your account, please go ahead and bring them as long as they simplify the stage for you, alright? I make it 8 operators so that you can change the strat, alter it to suit yourself. Now, let's do challenge 6 of this CC. Put Hill Hui Chi. Challenge 6. Now, we're gonna play Smurto over here. And then whenever her skill is ready, go ahead and trigger it, her skill, if I say his by accident. Now, we're gonna let one Baiti bypass, because Myrtle can kill that Baiti. And then place Mountain over here. And then trigger his skill. Next up, place Pudenko, whichever like strong arts damage dealer that you have, onto the black color tile, facing to the right. So if you have a caster, you can also place a caster here, facing to the right, or a sniper, whichever that you have in mind. Next up, place a uh, healing defender over here. Uh, doesn't matter the direction. Do as you wish. Now use Pudenko's skill whensoever that is ready to help to kill the blindy. Now, notice over here that these, the healing defender and the blindy, they both have the same color. So this allows Gumi to block the blindy. And because Pudenko is of a different color from the blindy, she actually has increased attack against him, which makes it very good to kill him. Now let's use Myrtle's skill again. I'm gonna place medics here. Medic number one. Now, Mountain is going to try to kill the Smarty and all the enemies coming in. But he might actually lead the Smarty as you see over here. If he does do that, place a Gravel here to add a little bit of extra damage and then remove her once she kills the Smarty. Uh, I've made a mistake by not triggering Potengo's skill earlier. So I have to leak that particular Smarty as you see over there. But that's fine. Um, it's okay to leak someone in the stage. Trigger Potengo's skill earlier. That way you wouldn't have to leak anyone. Alright, I'm going to place a second um, medic over there. And then I'm going to trigger Podenko's skill. I remember to do it now. And then you're going to notice that the boss is going to appear in the stage. So about count 20 to 21, after these four appears over here, the boss is going to come in. So place Gravel here to distract the boss. The boss targets the furthest uh, ally that you place, as you remember. So this way, Gravel is going to get hit. Your medics are going to try to heal Gravel. If your Gravel is not strong enough, by the way, to withstand his attacks, bring another defender to place instead of Gravel, so that he can uh, attack that particular defender. Let's use the skill. Now, Mountain is strong enough to actually destroy the shield of Bree. I removed Gravel, we're going to use her again later. So look at that, there's a shield coming up, but with Mountain at skill 2 M3, he can actually break it, which is impressive. Now, after the boss has his first shield broken down, you're gonna see more Smarties appearing. As I said, I want Orchid to kill the Smarty on the left. If not, this Smarty and the one on top are gonna collide and kill Mountain. So that's why we're gonna trigger her skill, slow it down, and then get it killed. And then she's gonna do the same thing again. Um, if again a smarty leak, go ahead, place a gravel down to kill it. 
Just like that, as simple as you can go. Now, I'm gonna turn off Mountain Skill. We do not want to overkill the boss. Notice that there are two blindies, one on the bottom left and one on the bottom right. Uh, sorry, the top right. So this one is white in color. He's gonna be blocked by Gumi. The one on the bottom left is also white in color. But because there's a tile that changes the color, um, he's going to turn into a... Uh, with the black moon on top. So, in that case, we're gonna use a dynamite to change his color. And that way, when he goes to the changing color tile, he'll change it back to white and be able to be blocked by Gumi. Now let's use Pudenko's skill. The shield for the boss is probably about to come up soon. So, let's keep watch of that. Is it appearing? Once the shield appears, I'm going to trigger Mountain Scale so that he can break it. There you go. And there. Shield broken. Now I'm going to turn off Mountain Scale again. We do not want to overkill the boss, remember that. Now let's remove Orchid. She doesn't have a purpose anymore. Let's use Podenko Scale once more. And then let's remove Gumi. Let's remove Podenko. So Mountain is just holding on to the boss. What we're waiting for right now is for Gumi to be redeployable. Okay, I guess the boss does have quite a bit of health and I think there's enough time for Gumi to come back in. So I'm going to trigger this Mountain skill to down the health of the boss. Most likely there's still going to be one more shield that he has to break. Ah, there you go, that's the other shield. Alright, then we're gonna place uh, Gumi right over here. So Gumi is going to be the furthest target right now. So when the boss casts his uh, weft and wap or something along that line, he's actually gonna cast it onto Mountain and Gumi um, because Mountain is blocking the boss at the moment and Gumi is the furthest target away. Now I want you to take notice of the plus symbol of the boss. If there's a plus symbol on Mountain, you see how the medics are not affected. And the plus symbol on Gumi, the medics are also not affected. This is why the placement is as such. Now, I'm going to be very kind to add some damage onto the boss. We're going to place Fodenko over here, facing downwards. And then we're also going to place um, Gumi, uh, sorry, Gravel over here, facing upwards. So this is just a nice little extra damage. Feel free to activate your medic skill if you think you need, but I don't think it's necessary. Then I use Podenko skill, add a bit more damage onto the boss. Let me place Myrtle down. So Myrtle uses a flag to smack out the boss somehow. So by placing Podenko and uh, Myrtle like this, I don't have to be worried about the plus sign affecting them. They won't get too much damage. I'm gonna place Gravel down. So extra firepower going in. Rebel's getting hurt. I'm gonna use Podenko's skill again. I think Podenko is gonna go down in a bit too. And I can just replace. I can place Orchid down as well. And just like that, that's how you can defeat Challenge 6. You can pretty much do it with no leak, but I accidentally leaked the Smarty just now. So as simple as it can go, should be a nice strategy for you guys to use. Let me know if you guys have any questions down in the comments, and if not, hopefully this helps you. Alright, bye to all of you, see you in the next few days.